Previously on Invisible Cities. I realized that there was a visible city in New York, a visible African city, that if you didn't open your eyes, you wouldn't know. We wanted to focus on all those neighborhoods where uh, there are so many migrants that people from the same cities are actually afraid of going there in that quarter because they, they don't know the culture of people living there. When I first came to Cardiff uh, as an African-American, um, I was shocked by the degree of social integration. I was the, the whitest kid of all my friends. You know? <laughs> The child who's born and brought up in the UK is a product of the UK. His failures are to do with our collective society, and his success are to do with our collective society. It's nothing to do with him being Somali. It's not easy to bring somebody who just come up older like me today and say, OK, I'm going to put you to integrate in this into integration program. Whenever I come back from a, a trip, mm -hmm. When the plane is landing in Los Angeles and I look around and say, oh, there's downtown L.A., I feel really uh, at peace. You know, a certain sense of tranquility comes over me, you know, because I know I am home. When I say home, I mean three homes. <laughs> I could live three lives in three months and be in three different places and still call it home. So, yeah, yeah I, I, just to be free-spirited, the whole... Really, the whole world is our home. They say curiosity often leads to trouble. But if you don't take the risk, you will never know. My insane curiosity brought me across continents to look for people like my parents, who left their homes in Africa to call another place home. This journey hasn't brought me to Africa, but here, in Istanbul. My name is Nyalula Beatrice Kabutakapwa, and this is the story of my journey through the lives of some inspiring people living in invisible cities. The first stop is at Kadirash University, here I meet with Sedat, my alter ego. His father was born in North Africa, but he grew up in Turkey and became a professor of economy. In the last years, he has been researching the stories of African migrants arriving in Istanbul. Migrants come to Istanbul because it is in close proximity with Europe. Mm -hmm. and it will be easier to um, use Istanbul as a stepping board to go into Europe. But some of the migrants, they remained in Istanbul. They couldn't have chance to go and they have to find um, jobs, they have to make their living here. So that becomes a new normal and they continue living in Istanbul. More recently, what I, uh, uh, what I find out is that uh, most migrants, they come to Istanbul to live and to survive in Istanbul, to settle down in Istanbul because the word has it. Um, that finding a job in Turkey is much easier than finding a job in Europe. Football is another area of um, employment and studying. You know, some Africans, they come to study in Turkey. But um, most of the Africans, I may say, are inspiring to become businessmen. Meet Prince, my Cicero. With Beyonce as a soundtrack, 
he drives me through the busy streets of the city. Prince arrived from Nigeria, opened the cargo company, found love, got married. In my office we do cargo. Ah, okay. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do cargo. I also, some people, I do computer maintenance. Some mm -hmm. people bring computer for me yeah. for services. Gotcha. I should I come out the wrong place, but let's find a way to go. So most of the people know that uh, I sell all these cards. So some people come come there for for their cargo, you mm -hmm. know, sending back their property or whatever their product back home. Some people also come to buy these uh, international cards. Mm -hmm. Some people also come to buy, uh, you know, come to maintain their systems. Some people come for their web designing. You know, also, I design website. So it's kind of a uh, you do so many things <laughs> all together in one limited company. <laughs> She called it limited company. <laughs> I don't like it. And the office is in Osman Bay. Yeah, I have three branches. One in Osman Bay, one in Pepper. But this Pepper, I'm not going in the afternoon. Somebody else is staying there. And one is in Snacksarai. Mm. You know Asarai? Yeah, that's yeah, where we met that. Yapik Reddy. Yenikapi. Yenikapi, yes. Mm -hmm. Top Kapi, sorry. Near Top Kapi. I'm confusing with that Yenika and Top Cafe. <laughs> it's not my language. <laughs> it's Top Cafe. Near Kum Cafe, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we met um, a woman who came here that was doing craft. She was oh. selling craft work. Hello, Musso. You want to see at Aksarai? Okay. And here is Musso. She's the brave one. She could be my sister, and like me, she has her grandmother's name. But that is only part of the reason why they call her Mama. The other is that she takes care of everyone from the Senegalese community, including her arriving baby. Hey, on n'a pas encore assez d'assiettes, mais on fait avec. Les... On a juste quelques assiettes, mais ça va. C'est bon. Comme ça. Et après, je vais mettre un peu de. Merci de C'est bon. C'est bien. Ouais. C'est bien, c'est bon. Merci beaucoup. Merci à toi. C'est comme ça que j'ai fait. Je vais le mettre dans un chassé. Comme ça. Est-ce que tout le monde t'appelle maman? Ouais. Tout le monde m'appelle maman. <rire> Parce que j'ai. On m'a donné le nom de ma grande-maman. Mm -hmm. Et ma mère m'appelait maman tout le temps. C'est pour ça. Tout le monde m'appelle maman. Et les gens ici disent que je suis la maman de tout le monde. <rire> Il y a beaucoup de, ouais. de responsabilités. Oui, ouais, beaucoup, beaucoup. Parce que je gère tout le monde ici. Mm. Avant, je préparais comme ça beaucoup pour tout le monde. Toute seule. Toute seule. Toute seule. Et tous les jours. Je le prépare tout le matin. Je pars vendre mes trucs. Je reviens et je sers pour tout le monde. You're strong. <rire> Je le mets où? En London, je vais le remettre là-bas. Je sais pas, tu, tu travailles sans, sans réussir ta vie. Tu travailles dur et tu ne gagnes pas normalement ta vie. C'est ça qui, qui décourage le plus. Parce que si tu travailles et que tu arrives à gérer tous tes problèmes financiers, il n'y aura pas de problème. Mais tu travailles, on dirait que tu es, comment dirais-je, quelqu'un qui ne fait rien tout. Parce que ce que tu gagnes ne peut pas combler toutes tes dépenses. Mm -hmm. Ni même gérer ta famille au pays. Là, c'est pas du travail alors. C'est ça qui me décourage le plus. Parce que la vie ici, normalement, comme il se doit, c'est cher. Mm -hmm. J'ai regretté d'avoir venu ici. Mm -hmm. J'ai trop regretté. Moi. Parce que j'ai perdu trop de temps. Deux ans dans ce pays. 
Je crois en Dieu quand même, c'est mon destin. Je ne pouvais, je ne pouvais pas échapper, mais j'ai regretté quand même. Quand même, on apprend toujours quelque chose quand on fait des... Ouais, j'ai beaucoup appris. J'ai beaucoup, beaucoup appris. Tu as appris les Turcs. Ouais, <rire> ah, mais ça ne suffit pas. Ça se parle qu'ici. <rire> C'est ça qui est le problème. J'aurais préféré ne pas comprendre ce qu'ils disent que de le comprendre. Ouais. ouais. Pourquoi Parce que tu entends, tu entends rien que des mots, des, des trucs méchants quand même. Ouais. ouais. Ici, une personne qui, qui vit mieux, c'est lui qui ne comprend rien de ce qu'il dit. Je te dis. Mais tout, tout ici à Naksaray, comme Kapel, pardon, ou à Istanbul en général, mm. ou... Non, moi je pense que... C'est pas tout quand même, parce que j'ai mm. voyagé, j'ai trop voyagé. Je suis allée à Ankara, je suis allée à Izmir, mm. j'ai fait aussi Izmit, mm. j'ai fait... Comment ça s'appelle encore Antalya, je suis allée à Bursa. Mais partout, tu trouves des gens qui sont comme ça. Quand même. Parce que moi, je, les, je peux les comprendre parce que c'est des ignorants. C'est ça que je peux dire. C'est des gens qui ne connaissent pas encore l'immigration, les émigrés ni les noirs aussi, en, en général. Dès qu'ils te voient, ils te touchent pour voir si tu ne tâches pas ou bien. On te demande si tu es. On t'a mis une peinture ou quoi. On me l'a demandé, je te, je te jure, on me l'a demandé. Quelqu'un est venu et me dit C'est une boyam, ça Un jidérette. <laughs> In that Kunta Pay, you can get a lot of mostly from. I think Eastern Africa, mm -hmm. so, Sudan, Somali. The Black Street, Somali Street, they also call huh. it, right? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is the place, Kunkape. Mm -hmm. Because with this girl, she walked us to her place and we passed by the street and she said it was called Somali Street as well because uh -huh. there were many Somali. But to exactly. be honest, I was expecting more. I guess it all depends on the um... time. You know, some maybe in the evening time, let's say seven, eight, you see more people uh -huh. coming out. But in the daytime, no, a lot of people. I don't know where they go. <laughs> they disappear. And what I'm trying to say, like this place we came out from, mm -hmm. Uber, you can see mostly Western Africans, Cameroon, Nigerian, something, Ethiopia, something like that. Mm -hmm in this area. Also in Kutulush, you can also see different, I think I should take this out, mostly Nigeria also in Kutulush, mm -hmm. also Ethiopians too. These areas traditionally they've been always attract, attracted to the minorities. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, majority of, or Kutulush is known to be an Armenian quarter. Whereas, um, you know, Kumkapı, Yenikapı, that area is known to be Armenian and Greek uh, minorities. Uh, and around here, it is, um, it is more of the Jewish, you know, traditional Jewish community of uh, the city lived. So, uh, uh, because of that history, that um, these areas, they hosted minorities and they hosted um, some, you know, uh, other cultures in the area, they have developed a tolerance and understanding towards the newcomers and new migrants. Claude is the nostalgic businessman. I traveled miles just to hear once again the same nostalgic words about Congo that my parents used to pronounce. My only ally his son moved. Turkey is, is a land of migration. Even the Turks themselves, when they look at uh, a foreigner, they want to help because they feel it. And they know what a foreign feels when he's, he's in a place 
that uh, he doesn't belong to. So they yeah, tried to help me. Uh, my first year when I came, that was very hard. So you call migrant the first generation. Yeah. That 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 are, that are the migrant. Yes. Yes. You are not migrant. You, you are Italian. I'm not either Italian or Congolese or I'm me. So do you know anything about Congo? I don't think I know enough. Yeah. But I know what I know. <laughs> I can understand one language. Yes. Which many people of my age cannot. So I'm proud of it. Yeah. Um, I know some music. I, I know a bit. Not so, enough. No, the, uh, so for, for instance, with my son, okay, he's half, half Congo, half, half Turkish, and, uh, but I think he you knows nothing from Congo. Maybe the music that he listen at home that I used to listen first. He doesn't have any link to the Congo, apart his surname. Which is my uh, Musamba, this is the name. It's a strong link. That's all. Um, but he's a Turkish. Well, first of all, I, I prefer not to define myself. Because I hate it so much when I was little and there were, I don't know whether they ask you the same thing, maybe not. But uh, I was asked, oh, so do you feel more Italian or more Congolese? And I was like, what kind of question is that? I mean, no, there's no question. You, 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 you are Italian. Yeah, you simply. I'm yes. Italian by citizenship. <laughs> no, you, 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 you live, live there. there. You know the traditions. The traditions. You went to school Italian. there. You have friends there, and uh, I'm you Italian integrated. By yes. Actually, not you integrated. Totally. You integrated with your friends, uh, your generation of Italians. You, 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 you. In front of a situation, you you think almost the same way, right? No. 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 How is it? Because I was still uh, grew up. I, I was still raised in a Congolese culture, kind of. Obviously, because my parents had don't have the Italian culture, the, I wasn't watching Italian movies. I know nothing about Italian movies. I know nothing about Italian music. Um, I don't feel to say, yeah, I'm Italian 100%. I'm, so, how I'm a hybrid. I'm doing the same thing right now with the Italian school. Mm -hmm. I'm the unique black boy in the school, so they're so curious about me, but I love Italian culture and I ask them some questions about Italian. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel Turkish, Congolese, Italian. But now you're studying both in Italian and in, and in Turkish. Mm. No, just, just Italian. Italian. Ah, just Italian. It's just in Italian school. Italian school, but with what kind of programs? Italian program. Just Italian. Ah, like the program we would do. Yes. yes. He has uh, he started since three years after he went there, and uh, now it's in. I don't know the, how they call the degree. He finished this uh, Scola Media, mm -hmm. and now he's in the first after the Scola Media. Literature. Yeah, well, yeah. And they follow the program, the, the one in Italy. And when they finish, there is what they call matu maturita. Yes, he will, he will do the maturita also. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you learn about Congo dance? Uh, my father tells me something like uh, traditional dances or uh, my grandfather or grandmother in Congo, how they're living, how is the condition in Congo. So. But I will visit them of course because I want to see them. Just that right now. Good luck. <laughs> but when I'm asking you, say, do you want to go to Congo these days? Hmm. <laughs> maybe. 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 But like going for visiting. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. I want to see my grandmother. You just. I didn't see them. The grandparents. Ten years. I saw them ten years ago. When I was five or four. But I don't remember anything. So. But now he doesn't have an interest. To come. So when you said, okay, where do you want? If I tell him that, okay, we are going to. This holiday to South Africa or to Kinshasa? South Africa. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or even if I said, okay, do you want to go to New York, New York. or to London? Yeah. That's New York. Yeah. Kinshasa is. It's just for because visiting his more, family. But yeah. it's more challenging, I think, to, you know, if you have to take a vacation. Yes. I would think that for me it would be more psychologically challenging to think about going to Congo than to go, I don't know, to South Africa or to New York. Yeah, why? There you say, okay, I need to go for holidays just to see my, my, my grandparents. It's okay, it will be nice to go to Kinshasa. Yeah. It's a nice place. Yeah. But it's different the way you see it and the way I or you can see it. Ah, yeah. And it's also different the relationship because for me, for example, yeah, I, I love my grandparents, but I don't really know them. Yeah. So, exactly you know, it's when I'm there, when I will be there again, I, it will, I will be happy to see them and I will be happy to... Catch up, yeah. but it's not really like you can, <laughs> you know, summarize a 10 years period of life in one talk. It's like a therapy, you know. It depends on the people. Yeah, also, it also depends on the people, but personally, I see it almost like a therapy. <laughs> so if I have to choose between therapy and something else, and at the moment, actually, I would choose therapy. <laughs> Yeah, you wanted to go to Congo last year, actually. Mm -hmm. I cannot do without Congo. I have, uh, I have to get away to find out what is going on in Congo. Every time the news, now internet is there, so we get... Uh, he knows I'm always on the website just for Congo News, Radio Listening Company, and, radio so on, company. And, and so on. Every night. <laughs> But you also kept a strong connection with them. I mean, you're going there quite often. Yes. No, the, the friend that I had, they, they chosen my high school because I left Congo since 1983. So, but I get these strong ties, the tie. It's very strong that I can not let it go. That it's yeah. just pulling me, come and see, come and see, come and see. And when I was there, I feel like... I feel really this is my place, but I can just say one month. <laughs> That's another thing. Yes, yes. And, uh, and after that, every time he comes here, he's every time ill. Really? Yeah. Because too of much the conditions. of Congo. <laughs> yes, yeah, too no, much of too Congo. Much. It was for me. I, I, I would, we will go back to Congo, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. And for instance, for me, I think after five years I will be retired. I will get a home in Congo and a home here. Yes, I will spend almost six months over there, six months here. Yes. You wanted to learn more about Congo? Yeah, I will go. Yeah, five visit. years <laughs> from now. <laughs> to visit me, to visit me, yes. But this is but my I'm life. Going eh? to be in the university, so. Yes, yeah, so if you go to New York, but sometimes you need to vacation to Congo, right? If you go to New York? Yes, he wants to go there. Yeah. You want to go to New York? I love right. New York. Uh, I don't know, Manhattan maybe. But the, well, which university? I mean? uh, New York University. I want to like become an actor. So. And a lawyer too. That's the lawyer. The lawyer will be serious job and the lobby will yeah. be actor. <laughs> the the, the hobby with the art. I don't know. Uh, I like to defend people in the difficult situations. Uh, my idol is Nelson Mandela, so I like to defend people. So it's better for you to defend actors. That should be nice for you. You will be a lawyers of actors. <laughs>
Finally, Muhammad, the humble artist. He came all the way from South Africa to study calligraphy. He's the one who made me fall in love with the Arabic language. Why not? Can take a try. Here's your pen. Here's your ink. What uh, are you going to write? Of course. What are you writing? Um, your name. Why don't you start with something easier? My it's name not is. Easy. How do you things. say thank you in Arabic? Shukran. 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 Is that easy to write? It's not difficult. It's not easy, it's not difficult. And you don't write on that side, you write on this side. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> First then, I've never met a calligrapher in my life before now. Well, um, you cannot call me a calligrapher as yet. You will meet my teachers. They are complete calligraphers. <laughs> I'm still a student. But still, I've never met a student of calligraphy. Mm. <laughs> I guess it's not even something people here in Turkey are used, are used to. Well, at least I don't imagine a Turkish person thinking maybe that there will be people from other countries studying calligraphy. No, sometimes people are very surprised that I came all the way. They say we are here, born here, but we don't even know about this. So like you say, some people don't know about it. How do they usually react when you talk, tell them that you are studying calligraphy? Some of them will ask you, why calligraphy? Can you earn money with that? <laughs> What kind, what are you going to do for a living? But you cannot explain these things to some people because they cannot understand. Even if you try to explain, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Some people, they say they really envy me. <laughs> <laughs> Coming all the way and we are here. Because they consider this as a Turkish culture. So they feel very proud when they see somebody from outside mm -hmm. coming He's to learn their culture. culture. Yeah. But you do, you, you do have commissions. I mean, yes. How, you, you, when you explain to them that you're, you can actually make a living out of it, you do explain to them that you are commissioned. And mm, just like a, just as an artist makes a living. Mm -hmm. you know, a, a normal painter. It is how we do as well. So when did you start learning calligraphy? I started calligraphy in 2001. And then how did you get here to Istanbul? Well, I did that for and about... And after how many... I did that for about three years. And then once one of Ms. Hassan Chalabi's students came to South Africa for an exhibition. So she said she would introduce me. She would speak to his, her teacher about me, Hassan Chalabi. It only, I only managed to come to Istanbul in 2009. Mm -hmm. I stayed four months doing the basics of the script, just the alphabets and the joining of the letters. I stayed four months, then I had to go back. And then I was told I could do the rest through internet. I would do my writing, send it over by mm -hmm. email. But I didn't feel as good as it is when I was in Istanbul, seeing the teacher regularly. Mm -hmm. So you need to see his hand movements, how he does certain letters by your own, it's not easy. Are you going to be my teacher? Yes, of course. <laughs> Why not? There it is. I got it. It's even better than mine. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> that is bad. 
can you show me something that you did so I would say some proper thing and you not know, this. Well, this is a composition I'm working on for a friend. It's not finished. This is just the rough sketching of it. How long did it take you to do this? Compose this one? Mm -hmm. I've been busy with it for two months now. Oh. And every time there's always something I can improve on. This like is the this. same composition. And again, I put the letters on top of each other. Can anyone can be written in Arabic understand? No, not a, you have to study no. this. You have to study. It's not about speaking it. It's an art. You have to study it to know. Mm. I obviously cannot understand it. No, you would if or oh, once you start knowing how to read Arabic you will understand it. So you will also teach me Arabic. Wow. <laughs> You'll see in uh, twenty years. <laughs> no, we'll see if you study regularly. <laughs> Send your lessons through internet too. <laughs> yeah, I will. Every day something mm. a little bit. So you are here on a mission to cover mission, I like that word. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah, we are doing a research on African migrants in different cities of the world. What are you trying to achieve? By um, we just want to give a different view on migrants. We just want to show, you know, other things that migrants also do. For example, playing football or staying in a community or, you know, just living the daily lives, not. Um, Nothing dramatic or something like that. From what you have gathered so far, the fat of figures so far, you're getting satisfied or, yeah. or yet to be satisfied? Yeah. My journey in Istanbul ends here, but like always, I hope to come back. I'm glad I went through the rabbit hole, because along the way, my path crossed with that of Sedat, Prince, Musso, Claude, Umut, and Muhammad. And if you have smiled, if you felt nostalgic, if you have empathized, or only felt like starting a journey too, well then, my purpose has been achieved.